Thank you, Brother Smith. If you'll turn your Bibles this morning with us, book of Leviticus, chapter number 25. Leviticus, chapter 25 in the Old Testament. We'll read just a few verses here. Again, I want to thank each of you for being here this morning. What a privilege it is to have you with us. If you're visiting with us today, you're an honored guest. We count it a great privilege to have you. Leviticus chapter number 25, the Bible says in verse number 8, And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the month, seventh month. In the day of atonement ye shall, shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land and all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. I want you to notice with me in verse number 10, in the middle portion of the verse, the Bible says, "...and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof." I want to speak to you for just a little while this morning on this thought, let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. When I think here in the book of Leviticus and I think of the surrounding uh, situation of the people of Israel, how that God had blessed them and how that... Now, after 49 years, seven sevens, that they were going to have a year of jubilee. I'm talking about a time of rejoicing, a time of praise because of the blessings of God upon the people of Israel. And he noticed here in verse number 9, he talks about sounding forth the trumpet. And here's the thing about the trumpet. It could be heard everywhere. It could be heard everywhere throughout the land. And we're talking about those ram's horns. And and I've heard some of those ram's horns begin to blow, and and they're quite loud. Uh, I've got a dear friend of mine uh, who who can blow those things and and uh, and, and and blow the different sounds, the battle cry from the from the ram's horn, and and the uh, the the sound the retreat with the ram's horn, but. Now, boy, listen to that sound of the jubilee coming forth from that ram's horn. That'll make a, make your blood just run up and down your spine and, and just get the goosebumps to running because you knew that rejoicing time was here. And when I think about where we are in America today, when I look back over my 49 years, get the picture? I'm fixing to hit 50. And my 50th year is not going to be a year of, of despair and doom, but it's going to be a year of jubilee. That's what I'm claiming for my 50th year. And here when you see, we think about the blessings that God had, when I look back in my life as a 49 years, and I think about this America that I live in, I'm reminded as, a, as just a little tot going to school for the first time and going into that classroom and and hearing the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and learning the song, My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. I'm thinking back in my mind, I'm thinking, boy, those were some wonderful days. But I wonder how many classrooms actually teach them to sing that song anymore. They're few and far between. I dare say very few public government schools teach them that song anymore. But thank God for Christian schools who will still teach them the songs of America. Come on now, don't get quiet on me. I think back and I think as a first grader and a second grader with godly teachers who weren't afraid to take this Bible and open this Bible and say, we're going to have devotions and pray. America was great because she had some great leaders. Come on down to my seventh grade, eighth grade, 
ninth grade. I had a ninth grade homeroom teacher, Miss Johnston. Miss Johnston was on up in years. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I thought she was past 80 when she taught. Though she wasn't. But there's one thing I do remember. Even still in that ninth grade classroom, she would take her Bible. She would read a verse of Scripture and pray with some ninth grade freshman high school students. Even though in America... They were wanting to take the prayer out of the public school, and by and large, they had done so. Thank God for one who still stood. I think of America, and I think of uh, of what we have, and 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 I and I go back, and I remember sitting, and I remember I remember watching on Sunday night after church. The preacher didn't preach too long back then. <clears throat> we got home, but I remember watching on an old black and white TV. As Neil Armstrong put his foot upon the moon. I remember hearing him speak from that place. I remember seeing the photos of little bitty earth way back here from the moon. I remember hearing the astronaut, I forget which one it was. Someone will have to remind me later about. But one of them made the comment, the fact, how can anyone believe that there's not a God? Oh, to put and hold the the universe into place and to put it where it is. I think of America. I think about the battles that she's fought. I think about the price that we have of liberty this morning. I think of the price uh, 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 of the blood that was shed, not just on foreign soil, but even blood shed here on our soil during a great time when our country was torn apart, but yet it made America greater. She became stronger as a nation. Her freedoms were worth fighting for. And liberty simply means to be set free from bondage of another. To be set free from the bondage of another. To be given the right to do whatever you want to do freely. Oh, thank God for that liberty that we have. And here in this portion of Scripture, He says, Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the inhabitants thereof. Yes, there ought to be a proclamation. The people of America ought to rise up again and, and, and greatly, and, and not just on Wednesday on the 4th of July, but I'm talking about every day. Uh, uh, June 14th is a special day to me. It's an anniversary date for me and Linda, but yet it's flag day. I mean, flags ought to fly. Every day ought to be a flag day in America for me. Hello. I'm proud to wave this flag. I'm proud to to look upon its red, its white, its blue, and the 50 stars that signify the unity of 50 states as one nation under God. Indivisible. Hello, that which cannot be divided with liberty and justice for all. I think on the back of your bulletin, or in an insert in your bulletin, there's a, a statement in there by Theodore Roosevelt. It'd do you well to go home and read it. God gave us some leaders with some great wisdom. I was checking with Timothy yesterday about our heritage and our descendants i i thought we had some were irish descendant but he said no we're actually english descendant but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i'm not an english american i'm an american those who want to call themselves by any other name besides american are not truly american hello May I submit to you this morning that America is set free because Americans fought for her freedom. Thank God that there is a Lady Liberty that stands in New York's harbor at Ellis Island. And she's there signifying, this is the door to liberty. This is the door to freedom. 
And that is the door into the United States of America. There is but one door. May I submit to you this morning that that was put there by the friends given to us because of a kindredness and a friendship. They want us to have that freedom. May I submit to you this morning that America needs to rise again and the people of America need to rise again and say, I am proud to be an American. Period. A proclamation. And I know as I get a a little quiet, somebody probably think I'm stepping over the threshold into political speech. May I submit to you, I have the freedom provided by the blood of men on foreign soil in this soil that I can speak. Hello. Hello. You go to your First Amendment. No one shall make any ruling to prohibit the exercise of the freedom of religion. And then goes on by following, he talks about in its speech, the freedom of speech. In its press, by what it wants to publish, you realize that our freedoms to speak and to publish and to say are guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. Anyone who would try to trample those out is none other than a traitor to the United States of America. You go back in history and find out what America did to traitors. Hello. I'm still proud to be an American. I'm still proud to stand for the red, white, and the blue. I'm free today. May I submit to you, I'm thankful that we have freedom of religion. I'm Baptist by conviction, not by the Constitution of the United States. But I'm thankful that the freedom for those who wish to worship the Catholic faith can worship the Catholic faith. Hello, listen to me now. I'm talking about our freedoms run deep. I'm thankful that the the charismatics can worship as they want to worship. I'm thankful that any other religion can worship as they want to worship. The Jehovah's Witness, the Muslims that are here in the country can worship as they ought to worship. Linda and I were in Chattanooga just recently. I thought this was quite, quite, quite amazing, quite unique. We wish we had taken a picture of it, uh, but uh, at least I had an eyewitness. Linda saw it too. At least she wore her glasses where she could see it, and I thought I saw it. But we were riding down. <laughs> we were coming down Broad Street, headed back toward uh, Lookout Mountain, and uh, we noticed off to our right, we stopped at a traffic light, and there was a, another street uh, coming angled in, and sitting there at storefront was a Muslim house of worship, a Spanish, Hispanic, Pentecostal church, and a Baptist church. All three storefronts, one right after the other. And I thought, thank God for America. Thank God for America. So it's, it's a wonderful place. May I submit to you this morning, though, we have those freedoms, we have those liberties because of America and the freedom that she gives us. Oh, who are the people who need the freedom? That's those who are under bondage. You realize that we have our heritage because there were those who couldn't worship freely in the, the land of England? Hello? Go back and study your U.S. history. That's why they want to come. So they could freely worship the Lord Jesus Christ and promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as they saw fit according to the dictates of their own heart. That's found in the first chart of, the, of Virginia that was issued by the King of England. He granted them that charter. The people who are under bondage, people who are oppressed, people who are, are bound down and cannot move freely to act according to their own hearts, may I submit to you. But that freedom does not infr- give you the right to infringe upon the freedoms of another. Hello? I'm as much against abortion as I am anything. But for me to walk in a march to blockade a door fridges upon the freedom of that lady 
to do what she wishes to do. Hello, come on now. It's wrong. It's murder. But my freedom does not give me the right to infringe upon the freedoms of another in this country. Does it give me the right to come into Brother Braswell's house and tell him, you can't do this? No, not at all. I don't even have the freedom to go to my own daddy's house and tell my dad, you can't do this. Hello? Come on. I'm told could we have freedom this morning and liberty. We ought to let it ring. We ought to let it ring loudly and boldly and proudly. Hey, I'm glad to be an American this morning. People are in bondage. Yes, the people of Mexico have been in bondage. Yes, the people of, of France have been in bondage. Yes, the people of Iraq are in bondage. Yes, there are people around the world that are in bondage and they want the freedom that we have. That's why so many hate the flag that we fight under. They don't want the people, those who are in leadership, don't want the people to have that freedom. They want them to have that liberty, but thank God for their desire. And those are the people, yes, we ought to work to set them free. Hello? If you were in jail or in bondage and you needed help to get out of that bondage, wouldn't you want me to come along and help you if I could? Sure you would. Sure you would. May I say to you this morning, as great as it is to talk about America, as great as it is to talk about the freedom we have here in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and though some may disagree with me, that's okay. We have that freedom to disagree. May I say to you this morning that the greatest freedom that we ought to let ring and ought to let sound out more than any other is the freedom that we have because of forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin. I'm reminded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to proclaim, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all that mourn. May I submit to you this morning that thanks be unto God we ought to let it ring loudly and, 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 uh, and uh, throughout the land that, hey, I'm free from sin. I am a Christian. Like Brother Smith saying when he sang a moment ago, I am proud. I'm so glad to be called a Christian. So glad to, to know that the cross, it's the cross, it's our Statue of Liberty, it's the cross that sets us free. When I think of the people that need to be free from sin, I think of the bondage that they're under, under the bondage of sin, but yet under the bondage of one Satan, Lucifer, that devil, that serpent. He's got them in control. He's got them in bondage. And, and they need to be set free. Hey, listen, if we've been set free, what don't you want somebody else to be free also? Oh, listen. Thanks be unto God for the liberty that we have from Jesus Christ and that the Spirit of the Lord God called, called men and called uh, missionaries and called preachers to go and proclaim the liberty that belongs to the captives that the captives might be set free. And I think of John chapter 8, verse 36. The Bible says here, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, He said, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Think about being set free. I'm free. I'm free. The songwriter wrote the song, I'm free from the guilt of the past. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free at last. Oh, to think that the Lord Jesus Christ can make us free and we shall be free. Indeed, that's a, a guarantor, a seal of guarantee that, hey, it will happen. And you are free. When I think of 
the people that need to be free. That's those who are in sin. The price of freedom was shed at Calvary when the Lord Jesus Christ shed His blood upon that old rugged cross that they might have that liberty and that freedom. If Christ had not gone to that cross, you and I would still be yet in our sins. Had Christ not died, had Christ not shed His blood, had Christ not rose again that third day, we would still be yet in our sins. But Christ died. Still like to sing that old song. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I Lay down, I cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Do you ever go back and just get alone and quiet and just think about that cross? Do you ever just get alone and let your mind's eye carry you to that hillside. You ever get along and just gaze upon that middle cross and picture the Lord Jesus Christ hanging there in His body that's been broken and beaten and bruised and now bloodied for you. You won't see dried up blood you'll see fresh blood that still flows from His veins. You'll still see fresh blood that flows from His hands and from His feet and from His wounded side. Because those scars are still open for you. All on that cross, Jesus Christ died. But what about the proclamation of the freedom, the liberty we have in Jesus Christ? Psalm 107, verse number 2. The Bible says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're to proclaim liberty throughout the land. We're to proclaim freedom throughout the land. Just as much, in fact, if not more and more loudly, then we cry and we sing uh, about America and how great she is. We ought to cry as God's people, Hey, I'm free! I'm free! There's freedom in Christ. There's liberty in Christ. And He wants to set you free. So you can continue in sin. You can continue to live the way you're living, but you know what the end result is? It's an eternity in a place called hell. You'll continue under bondage. You'll continue under the chains of sin. And they'll carry you all the way to a place called hell. When all along, all along the way, there ought to be someone crying, I'm free. I know the key. I don't like your chains. And as you travel your journey, there ought to be somebody. If you pass by, you'll pass by the key. Time and time again. And when you pass by that key one last time, it's for eternity. It's over. This may be the last chance you have for the key of faith to unlock the sin around your heart and set you free. Proclaim liberty. Let freedom reign. I like shouting. I like getting excited. I'm going to get excited at a ball game. I ought, to, I ought to be able to get excited in church. Hello. Amen. 
you go back and read the book of Psalms. You know, I believe I believe when Israel worshipped, I think God, they got a little emotional. Hello. I think they're emotional in glory this morning. Think about the Lord high and lifted up, proclaiming Him throughout the land. There's liberty in Jesus Christ. There's freedom in Jesus Christ. Do you know Him today? You may be free as an American, and you have the freedom of choice. That God gave you that when you were first born. Freedom of choice. You can choose. It's yours. I'm glad December 5th, 1971, Brother Carl, I chose Christ. I'm glad I chose Him. But more than that, I'm glad at Calvary He chose me. Hot dog. I'm glad He chose me. If you're saved this morning, you ought to be able to smile. You ought to smile. And think and, and be excited about the fact that God chose you before the foundation of the world. I know I know when we look at the cross, it says for whosoever will, but when we get come through the blood and get to the other side of the cross, we can look back and see chosen before the foundation of the world. Chosen in him. I'm glad that I've chosen Him because He set me free. The choice is yours. You glad to be an American? I said an American. Are you glad to be a Christian? And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, have your way. Lord, we recognize that You've blessed every one of us here this morning with the privilege to be in your house. And it is a privilege. Oh, thank you for the privilege we have to to live in America where we have the freedom to choose which church we'll go to today. Where we have the freedom to choose what religion we wish to follow. Or we have the freedom to choose Christ as our Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank You that we have the privilege to sing about America. But yet greater still, thank You for the privilege, freedom of silence that we can sing about Jesus Christ. Oh, help us not be ashamed. If we're not ashamed to be an American, Lord, help us not be ashamed to be numbered among the redeemed and say so. Father, there may be someone here this morning who's not saved. They've not been set free. Lord, they're still in the bondage of sin, under bondage of uh, of Satan. Lord, they need to be delivered. Oh, I pray this morning that they would trust Christ, put their faith and trust in Him alone as their Savior have their sins forgiven that they today can begin to rejoice and let freedom ring because they've been set free through the blood and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Search our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder who be honest say, Pastor, if God searched my heart, I can honestly say that I am proud of to be an American. And I'm not ashamed of it. Would you lift your hand? God bless you. I'm not ashamed of it. God bless you. I wonder who be honest in and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved and I'm not ashamed to let it be known that I'm a Christian and I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. Would you lift your hand? Just lift your hand. I know for sure I'm saved. God bless you. Thank you. You can put them down. I wonder this morning who be honest say, Preacher, I can't say that I'm saved today. I can't say that I've been set free. Pastor, I need to trust Christ as my Savior. Would you pray for me? Just lift your hand. I'll pray for you anywhere. 
I'm not sure. I've heard about Jesus dying on the cross, but I've never asked Him to come to my heart and be my Savior. Oh, I've always gone to church and I've been a good good fellow, good girl, but I've never recognized myself a sinner. I've never recognized myself lost and on my way to hell. Preacher, but I need I need Christ today. I see it. I need Christ in my heart. Pastor, would you pray for me? I'll not embarrass you. Thing. If you'll lift your hand, I'll pray for you. Anybody anywhere? Pastor, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you, son. You put it down. I wonder this morning then how many of you who are Christians recognize that America has many problems. And only God can solve those problems and are willing to say, Preacher, I, I, I believe America needs revival. I believe America needs me as a Christian to pray for my country more than I have been and for my leaders. Pastor, would you pray for me? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So we stay quietly to our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. Just a moment, Brother Smith began to sing a verse of invitation. If you're lost this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, my invitation to you is that you would come and let us take the Word of God and show you how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. How that you can trust Christ as your Savior. But you just lifted your hand maybe and said, Preacher, I, I want you to pray for me and I'll pray for America. This altar is open. Why don't you come and get on your knees before the throne of God. Cry out to God for God to to give America revival.